Welcome back, everyone, to Ace Attorney Investigations, Miles Edgeworth 2, Prosecutor's Path. Oh, man. So, we're, we're looking through the holding cell that Knightley was in, and we've just found out there's been correspondence between Knightley and Dogecoin. And I'm just like, okay. And then now something else is happening. <laughs> so it's just more and more. I don't even think we're near, like, the end of this. Like, I can't even tell. What happened? Yeah, someone just, like, shouted. Oh, it's you, is it? Uh, the security camera recorded something terrible. What? Was it your butt? What? Can you let me see? Of course, sir. I have a portable playback device right here. Then let me see it right away. Okay, what do we got? Alright. There's the... Oh my god, what the... Whoa, 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 what's happening here? I tried to see it in the mirror, but I couldn't really see. This is... This black thing has got to be that doggy, right? Mm, not necessarily, because it looked like it was coming from the top of him, right? I didn't see anything on the bottom, like the dog's legs or anything. Wouldn't the doggy need to be standing on something? Up until this point, I thought the murder took place inside the prison. But it appears I was mistaken. What the... So he was dragged over there, or carried over there? <clears throat> Sorry, my voice is still really bad. I'm sure everyone's really surprised by it. The place where Knightley was attacked was... Oh, God. I mean... <clears throat> Sorry, that would explain why, the, why something was mopped up on the floor, though. Right? Because if he was bleeding... If he was bleeding, then that would be it. So the holding cell. It was a detention center. And furthermore, he was attacked by Dojin's dog. This decisive evidence, Dogen's dog. Dojin sounds better, though. Security footage recorded the moment the victim was attacked. Black silhouette in the detention center. Is it really the dog, though? Like I said, I didn't even see his legs. Can't dogs don't fly around? If Knightley was killed in this room, then this piece of evidence we found in the cell takes on a new meaning. It's gotta be the, the newspaper. Which piece of evidence takes on a new meaning if the murder occurred in the holding cell? Uh... This, the wiped floor. Signs that the floor was wiped clean. That would make sense. For some reason, someone wiped the floor clean. It's possible that they were wiping away bloodstains. Even if it was the dog! Who came in later to wipe the bloodstains? How did Dogen get out of the cell? That, that doesn't seem right either. Does it? Thank you for your hard work. Well, I have your attention. May I ask for one more favor? What would that be? There should be a detective by the name of Dick Gumshoe in the detention center or the prison. I would like you to give him a message. Tell him to check this room for traces of blood and give the results to me. Y yes sir! Okay. Wipe floor data. The floor is wiped clean and saw the victim's cell. Forensics has been asked to look for traces of blood. That'll probably update again later. This should corner that old coot. No, not yet. We still don't know how Knightley and the dog moved from here to the prison. Yeah, I mean, I get that the dog could possibly open the gate, but still. Oh, that's true. But once we figure it out... Um, where should we check out next, Mr. Edgeworth? The guards here might know something about the murder. Um, let's see if we can learn any new details from them. Alright. Let's do it. Okay, we're back here again. Are we just gonna ask everybody? All right, <laughs> let's continue our- Ah! What now? <gasps> Look who it is! Oh, sorry to intrude. What's up, boy? Yo, you and your crazy Bono glasses, you are back, boy! I'm so happy. Well, if it isn't Mr. Prosecutor and the little lady. Fancy meeting you here. This man is Shi Long Lang, an Interpol agent. About two weeks ago, he was in charge of investigating one of my cases. God, it was only two weeks ago, imagine. It seems like so far, because it took me so long to play the game. I would have thought he returned to his native country of Zangfar by now. Agent Lang, what brings you here? Uh, some boring work, nothing you need to know about. <laughs> On top of a black dog, we meet a black wolf. Huh? You came alone today, Agent Lang? Did you? 
Two B's not with you, right? Not after what happened before. <laughs> Usually he'd have a huge police force with him. Well, that too, of course. We already know what happened to 2B. Mr. Prosecutor seems you've been busy these past few days. These past few days? Is he referring to the incident with the Zangfa president? Well, surely he knows about that. It's his country. <laughs> I would have thought you'd be involved in his security as well. Ugh. Our president doesn't even trust his own country's police force. Look at the results of hiring a private security company. It's laughable. Agent Lang doesn't trust prosecutors or the courts. That's why. He brings along a large force of capable policemen to thoroughly investigate the crime scene. Yeah, but he gets the job done, doesn't he? I mean, he did before. Yes. If you and your subordinates had been there, the results might have been different. My subordinates, uh, they're no longer with me. They're not with you? Funny. It looks like I'm a real lone wolf now. <laughs> Agent Lang, just what happened exactly? Didn't I tell you? There's nothing you need to know about. Well, I'll be seeing you, Mr. Prosecutor. Wait, what happened to him? He didn't get demoted or something, did he? Mr. Lang! I wonder what happened. Yes, it troubles me too, but there's nothing we can do about it for now. Huh. God, everyone's coming back here. I mean, I, I'm expecting somebody from each game to pop up at this rate. Okay, let us continue our investigation. Got it. First, let's ask those guards a few questions. Which one's all these guards? <clears throat> like this man here, sir. This is a difficult case. What's wrong? Is something troubling you? So, sir, one of my uniforms has gone missing. But I'm certain that I placed it in this locker. Maybe the uniform grew legs and walked off somewhere. What kind of logic is that? Well, in any case, I wish you the best in your search. I'll be rooting for you. Oh, a missing officer's uniform, which means somebody could have dressed up and walked around freely, perhaps, maybe. But what about the bracelets and all that? Yes, thank you for the support. Stolen uniform from a detention center hallway locker March 26th, okay? Right. I'm so sorry about my cough, you guys. It's just never gonna get better until the weather improves. Nothing I can do. It sucks. Hello? You there, have you seen a black dog around here? Uh, of course not. If I had actually seen it, I wouldn't be standing around here so carefree. Um, did something happen with that doggy? Okay, let's not press this matter any further. Yeah, but don't we want to know? Hmm, so Dogen's dog didn't come by the detention center. I still don't think it's the dog at all. Okay, who's this now? Who Who is this? Oh, what's up? Mr. Shields, where did you go? Oh, where indeed. I've been searching for you guys the whole time. Walking around all the prison is hard work, you know. <laughs> That's strange, seeing as you came from the opposite direction. Yeah. Ray. Ray, why the heck you lying? Don't be lying to us. I've got some new information you want to hear it, <laughs> do you? You sure changed the subject quickly. I heard a little something from the guards. Seems Knightley caused a bit of an incident two days ago. An incident? You know, Simon said he came to visit Knightley, right? After the visit, when Knightley returned to his cell, naturally a guard escorted Knightley back to his cell. God, why does he look so scary in this picture? Look at that. His eyes are creepy. While the guard was unlocking his handcuffs, all of a sudden Knightley struck the guard and knocked him down. Did that really happen? Seems he was going to attempt a jailbreak. Is that on camera somewhere? By the time the other guards arrived, the key to his cell disappeared. But there's been no reports of Knightley's jailbreak attempt two days ago. Exactly. It's strange, isn't it? Right up until his death, man, he was still in his cell. What's more, Knightley claimed he never stole the key in the first place. In fact, they searched his cell and the key was nowhere to be found. Did the guard who was struck have anything to say? No one knows. He was taken to the hospital while he was still unconscious. He's still there now, it seems. So, in the end, we still don't know what happened. What the hell? Then what are we gonna do? Knightley's cell key during the attack on the guard, the key to Knightley's cell was stolen. The current location is unknown. Oh boy. Well, it's obviously someone dressed up. Who is this now? How many people? 
What the? Oh, no. Okay. Hello, little boy. I see you brought your mom. <laughs> what are you still doing hanging around here? Oh, uh, well, you see, this is my assistant. <laughs> are you here to eject our investigation and make me into a laughingstock? Sebastian, I believe obstruct is the word you're looking for. In a way, I think his expression was apt. A pleasure meeting you again, Judge Courtney. I am... I know. You are Simon Key's defense attorney, are you not? <laughs> well, let's skip the formalities and celebrate our happy reunion with a hug. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, if you're gonna hug any woman, right? Like her. She's the one you're gonna go for? She's gonna slap you upside the head with that thing. I knew it. Get it, girl. She's like Franzi. That's why I like her. Oh, or maybe not. Who did you think he was playing with over here? Incidentally, I heard you mention an assistant a moment ago. Yeah, we're assistants at the Edgeworth Law Offices. Prosecutors are civil servants. To open a side business is to betray the goddess of law. As long as profit is not our objective, there shouldn't be a problem, right? Uh, yeah, man, like that's it. Miles here is a volunteer worker. The purpose of my office isn't to make money. We're pro bono. What a wonderful heart you have, defending others without demanding payment. Uh, 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 I do have an amazing charitable heart. More importantly, I'd like to ask you to explain your reasons for arresting Simon Keys. There's no need to. <laughs> Is that a challenge against me? No, I was speaking with Judge Courtney, not you. What are you doing with that little letter opener, sir? You need to put that shit away. You are going to hurt yourself. <laughs> I guess it can't be held. If you want to take on the best, you will fall like the rest. Don't you have a diaper that needs changing somewhere? Oh, I haven't said anything yet, but this is convenient. Then I will hear you out. What were your reasons for arresting Mr. Keys? I see no need to inform you. Sebastian, let us... <laughs> Just watch the scene. Come on now, you're gonna conduct the little shit in your head there. Watch as I run around in circles against the useless prosecutor. I think you mean run circles around me. Y yeah that's what I meant. <laughs> Prepare yourself, Mr. Edgeworth. For what? Oh no, I really don't want to talk to you actually. <laughs> Reasons for arrest? Well, I can't wait to hear this. So, you want to know my reasons for arresting that man? Well, the answer is simple. Yes, we found traces of that guy over there. Ew. Like what? You know what? Don't answer the question. How's that? Perfectly simple, perfectly decisive, right? Well, of course I was the first to notice it because I'm the best. Okay, Toad? How am I supposed to go about pressing that? Uh, you know what? Don't. J stop. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> oh god, I'm like choking over here. How's that? Got nothing to say. Speechless in my presence. Ugh, oh, this guy sure talks a lot. So, you're the one who arrested Mr. Keys, I take it? Mr. DeBest, do you have the right to do such a thing? Uh, well, obviously it was the police who carried out the arrest. But uh, since it was under my direction, shouldn't it also count as my arrest? As I expected. It'd be difficult to deal with both of them at the same time. However, wait, what are we talking? What are we talking about? Oh, right, of course. Her silence is troubling me. Just what is she thinking? I don't know. Oh no, I gotta get into the bottle with you. I guess it was inevitable. So you want to know my reasons for arresting that man? Yeah, I'm gonna press everything, even though I don't want to touch you at all. Let's get one thing clear. You do know who you arrested, right? What? <laughs> do you take me for a fool? Um... Let me get back to you. The one I arrested was Simon Keys, <laughs> no doubt about it. I expected he'd at least understand that much. Alright, well at least he knows. Obviously we had a fatal reason for arresting Simon. Tell me about it, please. Really? That's quite a surprise. So what is this fatal reason for the arrest? 
Uh, you're attempting to lure information out of me through flattery? I would not flatter you if you paid me. A good strategy, but I'm afraid uh, it won't work on me. Oh, what the hell? We have found vital evidence implicating Simon Keys. That's what Sebastian was trying to say. Yes! So because of this, like, fatal evidence, uh, I had Simon arrested. Oh my, this music! The answer is simple, we found traces of that guy over there. Can you tell me more about that, please? That guy, over, over there. That's certainly vague. Well, don't they say the best hears one thing and understands ten? Who says that? Nobody. You're just being lazy. Explain it more clearly. Sebastian. If it's alright with you, would you please explain it to them in more detail? I'm sure that everyone wants to hear what you have to say. <laughs> alright. If you insist, Justine. Uh, we discovered that. What? Traces. Like with a black light. I understand what they're saying. Perhaps you didn't know, but the victim carried a chessboard with him. From it, we found that suspect guy's, uh, I mean Simon Key's, a fingerprints. Well done, Sebastian. I bless you on behalf of the goddess of life. You dumbass bitches, it's because he carried it over here to give it to him. Are you stupid? Please amend your testimony. You alright with that, Prosecutor Edgeworth? Y yes Edgeworth doesn't even know what to do. Neither do I, to be honest. Victim carried a chessboard. From it, we found Simon Key's fingerprints. Wait, I think we can present something here. Because if- I think the chessboard itself says that he carried it to Simon, brought it to him at his request. Sir, stop this nonsense. Stop your stupid theme song, too. It sounds like a damn circus. Fingerprints found on the chessboard. Is that the ace up your sleeve? Ace in my sleeve. Uh, oh, ace in my sleeve. Up it. Oh, shit. In, in my butt. Yes, the, the methods I use are always the best. The ace is my trump card. Well then, allow me to show you that it is not, in fact, a trump card at all. Simon Keys was the one who sent this chessboard to the victim in the first place. So it's only natural some of his prints would be left on it. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sir, can you not get an Ahoge Boner in front of me? It's a little rude. You were in public. That took way too long. These fingerprints are hardly decisive evidence. Perhaps your arrest was a little too rash. Yeah. Rash? Yeah, like, the, like your diaper rash, sir. Does that make sense to you? To begin with, this incident occurred in the detention center and the prison. To suspect Simon just because he isn't a prisoner or a god is a little unreasonable. Ah! What? What's with him all of a sudden? <laughs> I finally get what you're trying to say! Rash! Like a diaper rash! You mean we were too quick to arrest the guy, right? He doesn't even know what rash means? Boy, you're gonna go far in life. He was stuck on that? Uh, sure, I was the first to lay eyes on him. And I was the first to notice the evidence that that was even faster. But I am not rash. Sure, Simon Key's like, isn't a guard or a prisoner, but... What is it? Can you please keep your son under control? Sebastian. Judge Courtney. W -w what are you doing, Justine? Don't butt in like that. Pardon me, Sebastian. Yes, your words on the suspect are very interesting. However, shouldn't you get to the best part first? The best part? Why don't you tell them? About your wonderful reasoning regarding the murder weapon. Oh, good one, Justine. A nice suggestion. Uh, Mr. Edgeworth, listen to my first-rate reasoning. Well, I can't wait to hear it, actually. Will this reasoning explain why you arrested Mr. Keys? Yeah? I'm sure we'll meet your expectations. What are we talking about again? Okay, that's an out-of-context screenshot, that is. Judge Courtney just changed the flow of the conversation. Just what is she planning? I don't know, she's involved. She's- I'm calling it now. She's definitely involved. All right, murder weapon's location, tell me about it. Uh, it's like obvious the murder weapon was a sharp metal object. However, the prison maintains strict control over potentially lethal items. Uh, so that's why I've reasoned that the murder weapon was brought in from the outside. Yes, it was hidden inside the chessboard. 
And since only the victim and the suspect's fingerprints were found on the chessboard... <laughs> isn't it obvious you brought and used the murder weapon? Wait a minute, how is chessboard going to be a murder weapon? At least it's clearer than his last testimony. Yeah, but not by much. It's the best reasoning you can get from prosecutor, the best, how do you like that? Now he's mixing up the best with his own name. But, could someone really hide a weapon inside a gift sent to a prisoner? Yeah, don't they check it? <laughs> You'll find a good place if you examine the inside of the chessboard. Inside the chessboard? Is there some place to hide a weapon? Uh-oh, we didn't look. Is there? Okay. What, can we open it? Like right here. Open it flat. As I thought, there are only chess pieces inside. <laughs> wow, what an annoying laugh. <laughs> you guys were right, Kokichi was the right voice for that. Inside the chessboard, huh? Perhaps I should examine it a bit further. Where at, though? Um... Hmm, there's pieces here. Get a little closer, maybe. These are chess pieces, right? I saw something similar in your office, Mr. Edgeworth. Huh? But the pieces here are black and white. Those are the correct colors. My pieces were custom made. Custom made? Well, that sounds like treasure to me. Her eyes are sparkling. Does she intend to steal it? I don't think she's gonna get very far with the chest set, to be honest. Uh, what if it's like under like a false back or something? Perhaps like a panel? Oh, indeed. This is... The top panel's removable. It's quite deep. Oh no, don't. Yes, there's more than enough room to hide a small knife. Is that right then? Yeah, I don't understand now. This is how the culprit smuggled in the... Objection! Huh. <laughs> What's with the... I wasn't even finished. Don't cry about it, little boy. Mr. DeBest, there's something you have forgotten. There's a gate at the entrance of the detention center. Yeah, aren't there metal detectors and shit over there? Oh, at least a guard would look at it. Uh, well, there is, but... He means the security gates with the metal detectors, Sebastian. We had to pass through the same check when we entered the prison. Remember? Ah! Uh -huh. Ah! Uh -huh. Yeah, that's it! Uh -huh. I remember now. It looks like he completely forgot. It would be impossible to smuggle a sharp metal object into the detention center. Therefore, your reasoning never held, even from the very beginning. What are you gonna say about that, madam? Look, don't take me to church now. That gate is only used on people. In other words, packages sent to the detention center undergo a simpler check. Oh, cause that makes sense. Are you sure you run in this prison the correct way? So they don't use a metal detector for that. This never should have happened. It seems the guards were too careless. You think, madam? All right, this has been updated. There is a hidden space behind the chessboard. Security gate has also been updated. Checks for metal objects, but only people. Which is the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. Talk about a loophole. Oh, right, Justine, thanks for the ass. Ist, that's gonna be... 10 million people are gonna tweet that screenshot. I cannot wait. <laughs> I can't wait, guys. You're welcome. Ma'am. Now then, Prosecutor Edgeworth, if you, you cross-examination, if you please- Don't you have a Castlevania game to be in? Cross-examination, as if we were at the courtroom. Very well. His reasoning. Let's see how long it will hold up under- <laughs> <laughs> This is the best game I've ever played in my whole life. I just- I just want to put that out there that it is. Oh, man. It's obvious the murder weapon was a sharp metal object. I'm pressing it, now that it's changed. A sharp metal object. Do you have proof of it? Uh, didn't you see the victim's wound, worthless prosecutor? Uh, the fatal blow was a stab to the throat. And a knife perfectly matches up with that. There can be no other explanation. Huh. It seems they don't know about that piece of information yet. Oh. Hmm. Bah, nothing to say. Speechless, aren't you, Mr. Edgeworth? Right, next, there's plenty more to my reasoning. However, the prison maintains strict control over potentially lethal items. How? By not checking them, like you said? Even with the strict control, there were still some items that could be used, right? Well, yeah, things like grooming scissors. Of course, there's more to this, right, Sebastian? 
Oh, exactly. At the time of the incident, only one was being borrowed. However, there was no reaction when we tested it for blood. Those would be the scissors Mrs. Sawa was practicing with. Uh, so the inside of the prison was completely clear of sharp implements. Alright. So that's why I've reasoned that the murder weapon was brought in from the outside. Okay. Press everything. Can you be more specific about where it came from? Of course I can. It didn't come from inside the prison, man. Is he trying to sound smart? Simon Keyes brought it in. That's what we mean. Mr. Edgeworth, can't you even figure that much out? I'm disappointed in you. And you've disappointed me from the start. So, Simon brought the murder weapon, but how, you ask? In the chessboard piece. It's like in the, in the thing. It was hidden inside the chessboard. Tell me more. No weapon was found at the crime scene, not even inside the chessboard. So where did the murder weapon disappear to? I'd like to hear your answer to that. <laughs> That's... Ugh. Well, after the crime, the cobra must have hidden it somewhere in the prison. <laughs> Is there a problem with the statement if that's just made? Yeah! Wait a minute, then... Yes, because... What do we have? Wasn't there like a... No, no, not this. Where is it? What am I thinking of here? Nightly's memo. This! Mr. DeVest and Warden Roland searched the entire prison but did not find the mo- Bro. You need to stop. You need to stop this! The murder weapon is hidden inside the prison? I don't think so. It's clear from this piece of evidence. What shows that the murder weapon can't be inside the prison? The- the thing that we just had. The investigation report! Take that! That's right, bitch. You didn't stop. Have you completely forgotten your own actions? You, along with Warden Roland, conducted a search of the prison. But you did not find the murder weapon, right? Yeah, I did- oh, oh my god! <gasps> you just cut your face! That- uh, well, we must have overlooked something. This guy just completely contradicted himself! You carried out such sloppy investigation. I'm amazed that you call yourself the best. Oh, get him, Edgeworth. Drag his ass. Uh, you mocking me? Oh, you know, just a little. Sebastian. Uh-oh, you in trouble now, boy. You're gonna get grounded. Please calm yourself. Don't get caught up in the opponent's pace. I'm fine, Justine. Man, he needs a juice box. You get this kid some nuggets. You need to calm your ass down. Did you really think the best prosecutor would be shaken by someone miles behind him? Wow, did it take you all day to figure that out? Probably working on that for a, oh, two days at least. I wish you'd stop messing around with other people's names. Oh, in that case, Kate Faraday is far, far ahead. Okay, don't you get caught up in this too. Yes, <laughs> if my best investigation didn't find anything. Then there must not have been a single weapon in the prison. <laughs> In that case, there's only one possibility. That you're a total fool? I agree. The criminal must have taken the murder weapon with him when he left the prison. So, it's only natural we didn't find it in there. The, yeah. Objection. Uh, sir. There was no way the culprit could have brought the weapon out of the prison. Don't we have security footage? I, we also have a gate that just said that it... Stop this. We literally just went over this. Have you completely forgotten your own testimony? You literally just said this, dude. Do you, that's twice you've insulted me! Oh? It seems you remember what I said earlier. But you do well to remember further than that. Ugh! What is that? This guy! He really doesn't remember anything! God, he's like me. I feel for him a little. It seems that way. The detention center and the prison are equipped with security gates. Anyone leaving must pass through these gates. Gates equipped with metal detectors. Ugh, that's what you- <laughs> Looks like he remembers now. Yes, there's no way someone could have brought the murder weapon and through the gates. Yeah, they're absolutely not. And so, the criminal could not have taken it out of the prison either. Uh, oh, that- okay, I don't want you to hurt your face. Come on now. So then, Prosecutor Edgeworth, do you know where the murder weapon went to? Perhaps the weapon is still inside the prison. But we couldn't find it anywhere in the prison. The reason you didn't find it 
because you believed it to be a sharp metal object. Are we actually really going with the dog? Thinking that the stuff that we saw on the camera was the dog. We saw the very moment when Mr. Knightley was attacked, after all. If you can say that much, then perhaps you could enlighten us. What would you say is the murder weapon in this case? From this piece of evidence, the murder weapon of this case becomes obvious. It really did not look like a dog to me, you guys. Am I, like, am I stupid or something? Like, I, it just really didn't look like it, though. Alright. This is what they mean. Here's footage from a security camera. It shows one of the cells in the detention center. See it with your own eyes. I'm surprised that they didn't even think to look for this either, though, by the way. It really does not look like a dog. Let me look at it again, though. Like, where are the- it's just a shadow- well, I guess maybe behind him, but it's hard to see. You can see a little bit in the mirror, though, but it still doesn't look like a dog. Oh, boy. What? <laughs> it can't be! This tape clearly shows the moment the victim was attacked by a black dog. I believe this is sufficient proof, wouldn't you say? Indeed, this is vital evidence. Horace Knightley was killed in the detention center by that dog. After that, the body was moved to the prison workroom. How did that occur? Our witnesses claims to have seen a dog in the workroom when the body was found. Of course, a dog couldn't have planned this crime. However, there is someone who could have. Yeah, but really, are we going with that? Just doesn't seem right, does it? That's enough, Prosecutor Edgeworth. Judge Courtney. Girl, what are you about? Oh, she's about to lay the smackdown on me, isn't she? Oh, no. Okay. You don't scare me, woman. She does a little bit, though. She's, you know, she reminds me of Cynthia. <laughs> From Pokemon, a little bit. She shows up and everybody goes to church. Okay, in the next one, I'm gonna see what she has to say, and hopefully she doesn't rip me a new one, but we'll find out in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you're enjoying this as much as I am, and I'll see you soon. Did live.